We're going to take a look at this ITLA scale models. This is actually a cradle load. It's going to go on to an Atlas flat car. This is an 89-foot Atlas flat car. Picked it up on a sale that Atlas had. It just didn't have hitches and a few other detail parts, but it's going to work for this particular process. Now we look at the actual uh, cutouts themselves. There's a lot of little intricate parts, but it's definitely worth it in the end once this thing is complete. Here I ended up printing out the instructions. They give you some good tips to at least get you uh, going in the right direction. One of them is actually cutting up these uh, clothespins and modifying them. I end up using a Dremel tool with a gnarly bit on there. It's a router bit, but it cuts fantastic and gets us the end product we need. Now we've got our clamps modified. Let's take a look at how many pieces we got here. All right, settle down. There's not that many pieces. It looks like a lot, but I actually do it in phases. Cut out all the little pieces. I'm just going to do the top and a bottom. And I end up having five sets of these. This is what the top looks like. And uh, you want to make sure that you line up the right pieces over the right sections. And uh, we're going to actually sandwich these ones together right here. So this is actually the bottom part of the rack. There's a little piece in here. It's not necessary. Just throw it out. <laughs> I set my pieces up and I get ready to build. I end up using tight bond glue. It's fantastic. It dries fairly quick. I have weights that I keep on hand. So now that we're set up, we're going to get started here. I end up taking each section of these and I sandwich them together. Oh yeah, I like this idea. Just like a sandwich, glue them together, I'll put the weights on top of them. Just like so. I've done all of them now. I've actually put the weights over the top of each piece. Now we're going to move on to the actual flat car itself. The flat car itself does need a few modifications if you're using one like this here. You can see these rails, they're actually raised. I want to make sure you can eliminate those. They actually pop right off. Do the other one here. And the one last one. So now you've got a flat, flat car. You actually have to end up removing the end portions that were meant for piggyback service. Surprisingly, they actually pop off fairly well. These ones are glued just slightly, but if you break off the actual little nubs, it's really not that big a deal to be able to file them off. Use a little screwdriver if you need to to help pry them up, but they'll pop up and pull out. As I mentioned, you need to file these little bits of area to make sure that the deck lays flat. Fairly straightforward. Just file them down. There are a few other areas that we end up having to file on these two to make sure that the flat car sits flat, and this is actually the top deck. Fairly straightforward, and it'll go on somewhat like this. That's a huge deck. And you end up having these little bit of nubs that are raised. The actual deck is set up so you're going to have a little bit of area that the thing can sit over the top. But I wanted to make sure they were completely flat. So I'm going to end up filing off those little bit of uh, high rises on each portion of the flat car. If you look here, it's very, very subtle. But right in this particular area, it rises up just ever so slightly. All right, here we've got the deck. you got to file these little areas down. I did also notice the deck didn't quite fit. It's a little bit long. You can see it kind of bounces here because it's too long. You just file out just a little bit of the area here again with the needle file. And now it's going to allow it to sit nice and flat. Step back, son. There's nothing to see here. As you can see, I filed off all those areas. There's a number of them, but uh, get them all filed out flat. It's not a whole lot of work and doesn't take much to do it. But the deck sits nice and flat and is ready for paint. All right, the glue is dried. It's been about 24 hours or so. That's probably more time than you need, but more time the better to make sure that the glue is cured. We're putting together a bottom cradle, and you can tell that by looking at the eight holes that you can see through on the middle portion there. That means it's a bottom cradle. Now what we're going to do is put the sides on. It's fairly self-explanatory, but you want to make sure you keep referencing the diagram to make sure you're putting these things together correctly. We'll put a little bit of glue on here. Put enough on that it's able to stick, but don't put so much on that it's oozing out on the sides. We've used the clamps that we uh, modified earlier to be able to hold these things together. I end up using all four and let these things sit for probably about a good two, three hours before I take them apart. Now here's the end product and it's ready for paint. Bottom cradle, it's the same type of thing. What you end up looking for for the bottom cradle is that there is actually no through holes through the center. You can see the four on the bottom, but there's no through holes in the very center. We're going to put the side on, put the glue on, and clamp them up. Then they'll be ready for paint. Speaking of paint, I end up painting the deck this almond white. And what I'm going to do here is actually take a wet dry 400 grit sandpaper and just roughen the surface up, as well as taking a razor blade and actually weathering the surface itself. I run it back and forth and end up giving myself just kind of a nice weathered look. We'll get this thing cleaned up and we'll get it ready to be put onto the actual flat car itself. 
All right, while paint and glue was drying on the other parts of the car, I ended up uh, weathering up the trucks. Season 1, Episode 6, I cover how I weather freight car trucks. But you can also see I updated and put a scale coupler on the flat car as well. Now we're going to glue the deck down. I'm using ProBond Advance. This is an Elmer's product. It takes 24 hours to dry, but it dries and cures like you wouldn't believe. So I end up uh, making sure that I'm able to hold it down using this weight, and I'll let it sit overnight for about 24 hours. Looking at the deck, and I'm going to actually apply the glue. I apply it just kind of near the center of the car. I don't put it right near the edges because I don't want it to ooze out. I do use my finger to smooth out the actual glue. And again, trying to avoid getting the glue out to the very edges because I don't want it to be exposed once the deck is uh, set down in place. Now lining this up, it's actually fairly straightforward. The notches and the actual deck allow itself to line up fairly well. I'll end up setting this in place, put a bunch of weights on it, and come the next day we'll be able to take a look and see how it turned out. Here's 24 hours later, I put a little extra weight on it, but we'll be able to unload these pieces of metal and take a look at how the deck itself turned out. Not bad, pretty happy, nice and flat. Here's a piece of wood that I end up putting a bunch of nails in. I'm going to use this to be able to paint the cradles. So I hang the cradles themselves on the nails, and this just is able to keep my hands a little bit cleaner when I'm in the painting process, as well as get paint on the uh, actual cradles themselves from all directions. I ended up choosing Rust-Oleum Painter's Touch. This is an ultra cover, which is a paint and primer. It's a gloss marigold yellow. We've got them all done. I'm going to let these things cure. And while they cure, I'm going to jump over and take a look at a few other parts of the actual car. All right, while the paint was drying on the cradles, I ended up going to the eyelets. They're still attached to the laser cut sprue, so I ended up just cutting these off so it's a little bit easier to paint. The one thing that I did do is I didn't cut the entire sprue off. I left a couple pieces on, so I'm able to hold on to it while I'm painting. I end up shooting this into a Rust-Oleum. It's actually a camouflage black, and it's nice because it's a flat finish, bonds to plastic. This material actually does have plastic in it, or plastic elements in it, so it's uh, easier for gluing. But as you can see here, I painted it black, and I'm going to cut out just a few of these so we can start installing them on the actual flat car deck itself. Now, before I ever glue anything in, I always test fit them. This is uh, just a dry run, making sure that it ends up looking like a nice uh, piece once I've attached it. As you can see here, nice little detailed add. I'm going to go through the whole car and install them. Now that I've got them all installed, I start looking them over and making sure that they're all sitting nice. And I can see a few of them have actually kind of sunk down, and that's usually just from my handling. So I'm going to end up just putting my finger underneath here, help elevate it to make sure that it doesn't uh, slide back down again. Run your nail underneath, just like this one here and make sure you got a nice reveal and ends up uh, giving it a nice detail at the end of the day. Here we are looking at the cradles. These are the bottom cradles. And what I'm doing here is detailing the cradles actual forklift loading spots. On the end, there's two holes where the forklift would be able to uh, pick up the actual cradle. This is actually a paint pen. And I'm just using this to be able to fill in those little black squares to be able to give it a nice look when it's sitting on the flat car. The illusion obviously is that these are hollow, but uh, at the end of the day, I think the impression that you get is quite nice. There you go. Forklift holes. All right, now in the flat car here, I've glued down uh, four of the five cradles. One thing I did do is I nipped off this little extra piece on the ends of each cradle. They're on there for whatever reason. I don't know, but in the photos of the actual cradles, they are nipped off. So I've cut them off. Now the top is able to sit nice over the top of these. Again, I used the ProBond Advanced, and I end up putting it across the bottom of the actual cradle. I will set it down onto the flat car deck, apply the weight, and let it sit for 24 hours or so. Now I'm starting to install the actual upper cradles, and it's pretty straightforward. You end up setting them over the top. I put the weights on top, and we're going to let these sit and cure. While those are curing, I end up cutting off and start looking at the actual tie-downs themselves. They're these really fine with little hooks on the end that will hook onto the actual cradle. And I'm going to go through and just cut these off. I'm leaving it in the raw form because it gives it kind of a rusted look. But the install on these is fairly straightforward. As you can see, I've put them on here. The glue has dried, and I'm going to start taking these weights off and give you a look. This is the final product. After all that work and all that waiting to be able to get this thing done, at the end of the day, I think it turned out fantastic. ITLA makes a great product. The laser cut element is very straightforward in terms of assembly. Um, a few little tweaks that I made along the way. At the end of the day, it was well worth it. I originally bought this to see if I wanted to buy a whole bunch more. There's a lot of time invested, but I think the end result speaks for itself. It's a beautiful day.